is scoliosis associated with vision problems. Scoliosis and ocular health does seem to be connected. Scoliosis is associated to some proprioception disorders, and this is the ability for one to orient itself with body position without visual cues. And a person's vision provides input that shapes the proprioception by body position and awareness. Eye movement is controlled by ocular muscles, and if a potential effect of scoliosis is an uneven eye line, it's possible to affect eye muscles that potentially could impact vision and can affect the way the eyes actually function. Postural balance is also affected by stimuli in visual, sensory, and other inner ear vestibular systems that could also affect a person's posture and the way they carry themselves. Now, research has actually identified a link between inadequate visual systems and the development of scoliosis, but the nature of that leak remains a little unclear, which we'll explore later. Studies have also found that increased rates of vision problems specifically in adolescents with scoliosis. So there is some interesting combinations that we want to talk about. Now, when we look at adolescents with scoliosis, we definitely know that most common patient is a patient that's diagnosed during growth. And it's between 10 and 18 years of age. And this is the most common age that we know kids are actually diagnosed with scoliosis. There are studies that have been, have been done to show the effects of what scoliosis has in adolescents, including the prevalence of vision problems with patients that are diagnosed. Studies have shown that clinical vision problems such as myopia, astigmatism, blindness are more frequently associated with patients in, with adolescents, and they also have scoliosis as well. The general consensus, though, is that even though there appears to be a link between vision and problems in adolescence and scoliosis, it's really unclear to determine what happened first. Like, was the vision problem and then they developed scoliosis, or it was that they have scoliosis and then they developed the vision problem? But what we do know is there is a combination or connection between these things. When we look at scoliosis, it can affect many things associated with the body. But one thing it can affect is it can affect the flow of cerebral spine spinal fluid, that this is the fluid that goes around the spine and around the brain. Now, cerebral spinal fluid not only cushions the brain and spinal cord providing protection, but it also is something that also transports nutrients and eliminates waste from the nerves in the brain that, su that it supports. An unnatural spinal curvature can disrupt the flow of cerebral spinal fluid. And this can lead to many effects that can also affect the brain at different levels, but also the spinal cord at different levels. And the buildup of cerebral spinal fluid behind the eyes is known as something intracranial hypertension, and it's associated with headaches and vision loss. So therefore, spinal curvatures, if it affects cerebral spinal fluid flow, could lead to one of these possible effects. We know scoliosis can cause postural change, but it's more than just postural change. It's actually bony change to the shape of the, of the bones from one side to the other. It can make the clavicles actually be different. They actually grow differently. It can affect the pelvis from one side to the other to not be symmetrical. It can affect the rib cage from one side to the other to not grow symmetrically. So it can affect any skeletal system that is being affected by the scoliosis. And one thing we have to consider is to the shape of the skull. We know patients that actually develop scoliosis can develop asymmetrical skull features, more than just facial features, but actually bony features. And where your eyes sit in the orbits of your skull are shaped by the bones of your skull. And if the bones of your skull are not symmetrical, you can have an uneven eye line that's more than just your head being tilted, but your skull actually being different from one side to the other. And this can have a potential effect on the condition of the eyes and how well they function, how well they balance themselves. This is also true with inner ear, that the inner ear canals may not be perfectly symmetrical from one side to the other. And as the curve gets bigger, this deformity tends to get worse and worse, which can lead to a more progressive problem because as the curve gets bigger, it affects growth and deformity even more. So we know these effects can be not only directly with associated with the vision acuity, acuity, but really vision balance. Because if your eyes are not located in the same place in your skull, they could affect the way you carry your head and the way you pr proprioceptor your, your body. And this is a kind of like a self-fulfilling cycle that as it gets worse, it perpetuates the next problem, which perpetuates the next problem, and it kind of just feeds itself. Now, we also, some additional effects to scoliosis is that we know it can affect posture, like I mentioned, but it can, it can affect, like, in children, uneven shoulders, uneven hips, uneven waist. So when we have these uneven 
parts of the body from left to right, it also leads to more proprioceptive dis disturbance. In adults, the most common effect of scoliosis is typically pain that brings on the diagnosis. And this pain is typically associated with low back pain, muscle pain that radiates down into the extremities, most commonly in the legs, but it can be in the arms. And the most commonly it's left low back because the most common scoliosis is left lumbar and it typically affects the left leg. Now, anytime you have pain, it can also affect the way you balance and coordinate yourself, which can lead to proprioception disturbances. So the best way to minimize the effects of scoliosis is to minimize the size of the curvature. As the curve gets bigger, it's more likely to cause more of these problems like I just mentioned, which can lead to more complicated scoliosis and more complicated treatment. So there does yep. appear to be a link between scoliosis and ocular health, but there more research is definitely needed to fully understand the mechanism of these changes, whether it's just deformity within the skull, whether it's cerebral spinal fluid being interfered with, or a combination of both those things. But the best approach to deal with scoliosis today is actually addressing the size of the curve, because the size of the curve is what brings all these things to magnify themselves and become bigger and more problematic. So therefore addressing the size of the curve is really the underlining cause that's driving the progression and the driving these un unnatural abnormal uh, effects that are occurring to the patient with scoliosis. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions about this topic or other scoliosis questions, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish new videos just like this.